Good morning. It's now quarter past seven in the morning. So we've been up for a little bit. We've had breakfast in bed. Now just trying to sort some bedding out. Still got to put away my sleeping bag and bits and pieces. But um, we went to bed a little bit later than we really wanted to. Didn't get to sleep until midly, nearly midnight, I think, which is really late for me because I'm normally an early bird. Um, but actually very comfortable can't complain at all the setup for the sleeping was just brilliant so um like i said we just had breakfast we're getting ourselves organized and we're going to be on the moon very shortly so we're pretty much ready to set off on day two of the upper stike trail um as you can see we've packed up the tent got all our things in our rucksack so we're almost ready to go and today's walk is going to be a 13 miler shouldn't be quite as hilly as the last bit of yesterday so hopefully it'll famous last words hopefully it'll be an easier day um, my knee is twinging a little bit my right knee so i'm hoping it's not going to cause me too many problems as i go on um other than that physically i think we're both okay paul's okay any issues with feet knees I think we've both got just a little bit aching shoulders from the yeah from the rucksack carrying but apart from that we're doing all right so um i'll keep you posted oh no one more thing i want to share with you so i got this new garmin it's a garmin um etrix touch 35 and very excited about it but let, let me show you so i'm turning it on and what it does it does all the sort of setup at the beginning and then basically just switches itself off and i've been trying and trying and trying i don't know maybe 20 times this morning to switch this thing on and it does the loading photos loading the maps loading everything and then just switches off um, this is what it was doing yesterday morning as well but then i took the batteries out put them in again and at some point it just decided to work. So we had it for yesterday and we used it pretty much all day to see if we were on, on track with the course or not because I've got the GPX file of the Offers Dyke on it. So I found it really handy and it's very frustrating. Look, this is what it started, it just switched itself off again. Um, and this isn't just it going to sleep, which does have a preset of 15 seconds on it to save battery, but it's, it's literally off. So if I switch it on again and just press the side bit, normally if it's on, it'll beep and you'll get the whole home screen up but now it's trying to switch on again so there's obviously some bug in it which is a bit of a shame I can't upload new software or do anything because obviously I don't have my laptop on me so I'm gonna have to use paper maps today and thank god we've got one so what I'm using I got uh, oops it's caught on my walking stick I got the office dike path A to Z so that I don't have to carry around I don't know how many OS maps like separate ones so this is basically follows the route from page to page and um, but of course I've forgotten my compass haven't I <laughs> so, so we're relying on phones to get the direction but actually it's quite easy with the, there's so many landmarks here and the sign posts are really really there's lots of them and we've only had a doubt I think one corner where we weren't really sure if we were going the right way or not so um, I think we're going to be fine we know where we're going and we know that there's going to be a river close to us most of the time so it'll be good it's just good to have that reassurance <gasps> the Garmin is doing something and now it's asking me if it wants if I want to erase all user data no <gasps> now it's gone off again <laughs> Maybe it's actually listening to me. When I complain about it, then it starts working. Ah, now it's working. This is what it's supposed to do. Okay, so I've maybe, I've tried turning that on 20 times this morning and suddenly now I'm doing the video, it's decided to work. So we've got the Garmin by the looks of it. Hope the batteries last. All right, keep you posted. Look at the scenery, guys. It's full of bracken. We've got this zigzagging path that's going down this really steep hill here we just came from up there where that rock is there's crazy trees and lots of moss came down those steps so we've been on the trail now for half an hour in setting out had a little bit of a lane a very small lane 
and now it's taken us into this woodland area. Hopefully today it will be a little bit less steep than yesterday. So according to my book this is one of the ancient forests that we walk through. I just saw some of the footage earlier of us walking through it. There's lots of big trees but I just thought you'd like to listen to the birds for a sec. so peaceful. We're the only people here. There's a little catch on this side. Oh, or you can do that. <laughs> Look how massive this tree is, guys. It's huge. I don't know what kind of tree. What kind of tree is that? I recognise the leaf, but I can't think what it is. Is it chestnut? <laughs> Such beautiful scenery here. We've got these little sheep down there. And all this is ancient woodland. Following this path down here. But look what we've got to the right, all this ancient woodland. Keep cows. I hope it means no rain, but normally they say when cows are sitting down it, it's going to rain. I'm just stopping by this forest. We're on the edge of the forest that we've got to walk through. We found this picnic table, so we decided to stop, um, have a nice cup of tea on the Trangia, have some snacks and just make ourselves feel good. We've been walking now for a couple of hours. And we've got a few miles under our belt, so it feels all right. And then later, we've got to head up into the forest up that way. That's okay. So we've just been hiking with these lovely people that we found. There's Rose and a friend that she's got with her for a few days. She's actually doing Land's End to John O'Groats. So it's fascinating to um, hear all about her trip and um, advice on hiking and stoves and food and things, getting a lot of interesting nuggets of information out of that. All right, we're just heading through these lovely woods, um, following our new friends and body check, still fine I think. How's yeah, your body? Fine, Knees okay? Oh yeah, really good today. My right knee is much better than it was this morning. This morning it was twinging a bit, but now that I've warmed up it seems okay. So I'm pretty hopeful that it's going to carry on being all right. And we're walking a lot more fast than we normally do because we're walking with other people, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so we're really ch checking miles off, which is great. And we're soon going to be at our lunch spot, I guess. What time is it now? you got the Saving time. loads of time. It's 10 to 1. 10 to 1, so we said we were going to do an hour and a half, which is about 1 o'clock. Yeah. And we've already done it, but we've been marching ahead and um, making really good progress through this really pretty wood. The sun is sort of out, though you can't tell because we're in the wood. Um, yeah, I just found out that my Garmin isn't going to charge up on rechargeable batteries. So I may have to change my plan with that and just use paper maps. Um, or buy lots of batteries. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but work it all out for sure.
this is the village of Red Brook and I see on the uh, map there's a pub there so we're gonna try and head to the pub get ourselves a nice drink and a snack for for lunch that's a bit of a treat to look forward to still hiking with Rose and her friend Rose has an Instagram page so if any of you feel like following her she's at, at Rose Le Jog stopped off in Red Brook and you might be able to see behind me there's a sort of post office shop so we just popped in to get some crisps and a little snack I'm just laughing to myself because Paul this morning washed washed out his undies and he's had them strapped to the top of his rucksack ever since but now he thinks that it might be the time after we've gone in the shop with them <laughs> hanging on his rucksack that he's going to put them away now apparently I think he's trying to avoid the camera because he's a little bit shy that I'm putting his undies on YouTube <laughs> So I'm just going to show you where we are on the map. We've been walking up here and we are just by the river on this section here. It actually says on the OS map here, Lower Red Book, but if we look at signs around the town, it's Lower Red Brook with an R. So I think there might be a spelling mistake on the map. Um, so the next thing we want to do is go up to Monmouth which is up here well I guess this whole area is Monmouth it's quite a big place we've run out of fuel for the Trangia so we're hoping that we can buy some more over there then we continue on following the route and I think it's on the next page the campsite that we want to stay at is a little bit over from where the map is uh, so we've still got a fair few miles to go if we can keep going at the pace that we were going out with those ladies then uh, I think we're all good. So let's do another little road stretch but here we are we're coming up out of Red Brook, upper, no lower Red Brook and we have to go I guess that way? Yes and it's up, 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 more up and we've probably got an hour and a half until we get to Monmouth nice to be off the main road. Hour and a half to Monmouth. I just called the campsite for tonight and she said that it's about an hour's walk out of Monmouth. So still a fair bit to go. It's a really steep hill this one. Happy geese look. But this is the hill we just come up. As you can hear I'm a little bit out of breath. Oh we needed the marker going to take us off this little lane. Jamie's from. It's okay. Oh, nice view. There might be baby. Oh yeah, there's a, the daddy at the back. He's eyeing us up. Let's we'll just keep moving forwards. Ah, looks all right. Looks quite friendly, really. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Not too far from Mum, I've got a different scenery again now. Back in the woods, it's beautiful. These big trees around us. It's a naval temple. This isn't actually the viewpoint, is it? It's just the, mon the, uh, the monument, yeah, or the meeting place. Okay, 
we found the viewpoint. Look at this. It's just incredible. This is the river down the bottom. That's Monmouth. They, they got, they have a Hello. Language. Hi. Are <laughs> <laughs> you hungry? Just saying hello. Amazing creature. Yeah. It seems to be rush hour entering Monmouth. So we reached Monmouth. We just stopped in this really nice little bakery that's in front of us. And uh, bought myself a couple of, I've got a vegan sausage roll. Paul's got himself a pasty. We had a little bit of a worry because we run out of fuel for the Trangia. We need to get some methylated spirit from somewhere. And we found out there's a DIY shop in Monmouth. It's at the other end of the high street, which is just down there. And um, it's now, I think it's about quarter to five now, isn't it, the time? Yeah, so it's quarter to five and we were worried that the shop was going to close at five o'clock, but we've just found out that it's going to close at six o'clock so we do have time to go there and hopefully they can sort us out with some fuel and we'll be able to have tea in the morning and hot food and drinks and things like that. Look what we just found. We went to Millet's and we got some fuel so it means we can have tea, hot food, hot drinks, such a relief. This is Monmouth Bridge. Happy to be out of Monmouth. It's a bit of a shock to the system going through a, a town, or I'm not sure if Monmouth is a city or a town to be honest. But um, after all the countryside and the woodlands, I had a bit of a coughing fit actually because I felt like I couldn't breathe. Maybe because of the car fumes, because we hit it at rush hour and we had to walk alongside a really busy road with lots of cars just parked and in a traffic jam basically. So now we've just come out of the west side of Monmouth. We had a little bit of rain, so we've got our rain jackets on. The temperatures dropped quite a bit. It's probably, I don't know, 14 degrees, something like that, 13 maybe. We've got this potato field. So I'm going to walk that way. Paul's going ahead. We just stopped for, there was a really nice bakery in Monmouth, so we had the, we had the pasty. But then we decided to sort out any hot spots on our feet. Try, really trying to look after our feet because I do not want to get too many blisters. So I've got some KT tape, which is a kind of physiotherapy tape. And the idea is that you, as soon as you notice any kind of rubbing, friction, hot spots they call them, then whack a bit of KT tape on it. And apparently it helps a lot and it's super sticky, so it should stay on quite well. Sadly, Paul's got a massive blister on one of his heels already. So we're going to have to try and sort that out later, cover it with some more KT tape in the morning, I guess. But um, my feet seem to be blister flea, blister flea, blister free at the moment, which I'm pretty pleased with. I've just got a little bit of rubbing on the top of my little toe on my right foot. Other than that, I feel like the muscles in my feet have had a good workout, so I've got a little bit achy feet, but the skin looks okay. The skin looks quite tough. Probably from all those hours spent on my feet as a chef. It's quite good practice for hardening your feet, I guess. So, according to the lady in the campsite, it's about an hour's walk from Monmouth to the campsite. Sounds like it's going to be a nice place. She sounded very friendly on the phone, so I'm looking forward to being there and uh, getting a good night of sleep tonight so that we can start again in the morning. Because tomorrow we've got 12 miles on the itinerary but Sunday is supposed to be 17, so I really think instead of 17, we should cut it down a few miles, perhaps do one or two miles more tomorrow, trying to even it out between the two places to make it slightly easier for ourselves. But um, I'm going to have a look at the map later or in the morning and work out a nice plan for that and see if it's feasible. 
All right, well, enjoy the rest of your day, whatever you're doing, and we shall press on. And uh, I'll hopefully put this video up later on this evening. I thought I'd just show you, this is like my main view when I'm walking uphill. I have to remember to keep looking up sometimes to see what's ahead of you and around you. So I said earlier this morning I didn't think this route was very hilly. Turns out I was wrong. <laughs> they saved the steepest bit for last. I was saying, just when I was saying to Paul back there, I don't think it's too bad, is it? It got steeper steeper still and then we got into this bit where you really need to be a bit like a donkey we're still two kilometers away from the route and if it's like this it's going to take us about two hours to get there I think yesterday on this kind of steepness we were doing about one kilometer an hour and we ran out of water and snacks and everything so time now it's half past six so I'm hoping we're going to be there, I don't know, by seven? Is that ambitious? Maybe. Probably. I'm flattening out a little bit now. Hopefully, there won't be too many more steep bits like that. We're both feeling pretty tired now. Just like to get there, get the tent up and relax. Just come across tons of these little baby frogs. They're covering the whole road. Another little one over there. <laughs> Very close to the place now. Hopefully, it's just down this road. Oh, I'll have to watch where we walk so we don't stand on them. Pretty weary now, but we reckon it's just around this corner. Fingers crossed. Yes, look, there it is, there's a signpost. <laughs> 